So after many requests, we've decided to start a new mini-series here on the channel. We're going to be pitting two of our most favourite things, integrated graphics and the game Half-Life 2, together in a battle to see which one would actually come out on top. Now they say Half-Life 2 will run on anything, and of course we're going to put that to the test. Now to kickstart this series off, we're going to be taking a look at this. Now this is an Intel Pentium processor. You may have seen it in one of our previous videos on a system that we got free. It was generally used inside home and office PCs. It was never actually designed for gaming, but it currently has two cores, two threads, and a base frequency of 2.7 gigahertz. In terms of graphics, it actually has an Intel HD second generation chipset, and I'll be highly surprised if it starts a game at all. Now for the game, obviously it is Half-Life 2, a game that was critically acclaimed and released in 2004 and pretty much set the path for many games going forward. Many people do say you can pretty much play it on anything, although quite recently there has been some struggles with some hardware that I've seen in other videos. So this is going to be a fantastic test to see what you can actually do with an integrated graphics from old to new when it comes to that game. Now enough about the CPU, obviously let's get on with the test. Okay, so we managed to get into the game and on the options menu, it's looking pretty good. We've got a current average FPS of 39, which was a lot more than what I thought it was gonna be. But let's check some video settings. If we go to the advanced, we can see that everything is actually in high and we've got a four time anti aliasing So let's give the game a go. We load up a game. And I think we're going straight into Ravenholm. And if you haven't played the game, then you won't know what we're talking about. But we're actually getting a reasonably good experience. It's a little bit jerky. And I suspect it's going to be quite jerky when we hit the barrels and things. But we're looking pretty good. Now I'm quite surprised that the graphics in this were actually producing... Well, now we're going down to 10 frames per second, so it's struggling a little bit, but I'm surprised that we're actually managing to play it at all. So this is, remember, 1080p highest settings. So let's have a look to see what we can do by turning it down a bit. We head over to the settings, go to video, advanced. Let's lower everything down to low see what we can get on low settings we'll turn the water detail to simple reflections and we'll turn aa off so let's get back into the game it's taken a few seconds to adjust right let's get back into the game reset our stats and we've increased quite a bit actually we've gone up to 50 frames per second now the game doesn't look too bad there's not really a difference in quality i'm sure we'll see a bit more when it's light but we're having a pretty good experience so far so we've decided to move on a little bit in the game so we can see things a little bit more bigger a little bit more brighter and it's not looking too bad we're still averaging around 38 frames per second, and this is in super low settings. So we've not exactly made our magic 60 frames per second like we wanted, but we do have another option, and that is gonna be to adjust the resolution down. So if we head back to the settings, we'll switch it down to 720. It'll just do a bit of adjustment. We'll OK on that and we'll resume the game. Reset our stats. And that's looking much better. So we've now got an average of about 77, 78, which means we can actually turn the settings up a little bit. So let's go and head over and do that. Go back to our options, video, advanced. Let's put everything back up to high. We'll keep water detailed as simple reflections and we'll give ourselves a two times AA. Hopefully it'll look a little bit better. It's just adjusting. We'll come back, there we go. So let's resume the game. 
Well, actually, it's had quite a detrimental effect to the performance, just turning those little bits up. I think it's actually the AA, so let's go and turn that back down. Let's turn it to none, see what happens. So that exactly was it. We're actually in high settings now and we're still getting an average FPS about 76, 78, nearly 80. So with a bit of e-sync, we could actually get 60 FPS on this, which is not too bad to play this game on this iGPU. Now the system we actually run that test on was actually an old motherboard with this processor, no graphics card at all, and 16 gigabytes of DDR1600 megahertz RAM. Now we thought that was pretty fair to include on that system because going forward we're obviously going to be testing lots of different processors, lots of different APUs, and we can pretty much match that quite well. As you can see from the results it actually performs surprisingly well. Not only were we able to start the game but we managed to get it into a playable state by just tweaking some of those settings. We didn't quite actually hit our 1080p 60 frames per second target, but from something that could actually cost you just 10 pence, you couldn't expect a lot more. Now, I believe that you could actually play that game all the way through in 720 with pretty much high settings and you wouldn't notice at all. So for 10p, you're going to get a pretty good gaming experience with that. Now, we couldn't leave it there. We needed to run a bit of a more fair test because going forward, we want to be able to compare it to others. So we decided to load up the Half-Life 2 Lost Coast game, which was actually a part of a level that was missed from the original game, but they added some new technology into it and decided to give you a video stress test. Now, although Half-Life 2 Lost Coast is a little bit more demanding, it will give us a bit of a better reading and particularly something that's a bit more fairer for that comparison. And when we run it against this chip, we managed to obtain a 36.49 average frames per second. Now that was running in 1080p high settings, so we'll have to make sure that we match that going forward. We are also going to be uploading these results to our website, so make sure you check that out. We'll put a link in the description below. So now that we know just a 10 pence processor can actually play the game, we want to know what you think we should test next. So drop in the comments below what APU or iGPU should we have a go at next. What's really going to actually get challenged by that game? It could be new or old, just let us know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to be able to see more of these videos going forward. But for now, we'll catch you in the next one.